What is up everybody? Welcome back to the Crack a Pack series. Today we are opening up a pack of Corset 2019, obviously one of the most recent sets in just the last year actually. We are getting Corset 2020 coming out very soon, so I'm pretty excited for that. But uh, for this one we are going to go through this as if it's a pack one pick one scenario. So we'll hopefully be able to figure out what our first round draft pick would be if we were actually drafting this set. Also, very quickly, I do just want to apologize, apologize, excuse me, if I sound a little bit nasally, I'm actually, I got a bit of a cold, but I wanted to power through it so we'd have some content for you guys, so here we go. So, our first card here, Knight's Pledge. It's an enchant creature. Uh, for one and a white, the enchanted creature gets plus two, plus two. Pretty straightforward card. You guys know my opinion on the enchant creatures. Uh, not my favorite. I don't really love that it opens yourself up for a two for one. However, I will say in this format... I found that they're not too bad. You do open yourself up. It's pretty easy. There's a lot of removal to kind of deal with big creatures, but uh, if you if you get really, really lucky and your opponent just doesn't have a high removal count uh, or they just don't draw the cards they need, you can really, really deal a lot of damage quick with stuff like this. So in this set, I've found that they're not too bad, but still not first pickable in my opinion. Much rather have some low ground creatures first and then be able to pile the enchantments on. Uh, uncomfortable Chill is an instant for two and a blue. Creatures your opponent's control get minus two, minus zero until the end of the turn, and then you draw a card. I found that this is okay, but not amazing. Uh, it does save you usually pretty well. Uh, it can gain you at least a turn or two, and then replacing itself is obviously quite good as well. Uh, it does have some synergies in this set with things like Enigma Drake and things like that also, but uh, generally speaking, You'd want to have the blue, red, uh, kind of spells matters deck established before picking this up. Uh, generally speaking, this isn't the most powerful card for that deck. It's just like an okay three drop. Uh, it, it's it's a decent play. It gets you a little further into your deck, but not amazing. <coughs> uh, Child of Night, very classic card. It's a two one for one and a black. It does have life link, so it does gain you life if it deals damage. Uh, I actually am okay with this card as a two drop. Uh, it's perfectly fine. There is a black-white kind of life gain theme deck, which is very good. I, I find that that deck is fantastic. It does a lot of damage very quickly and also gains you that life back, which is really, really great and limited. Uh, life gain, while not necessarily the best strategy in the world, in this archetype it actually does work. This is not like a key card for that strategy, though. Uh, it is nice to have. It gives you life like It gives you a little bit early game. Uh, but... It's not amazing. It is just a 2 1 for 2 with lifelink. So it's probably going to get outclassed pretty quickly. Keep in mind, though, this is a core set. We're not looking to get the most powerful, crazy cards off the bat. What we're looking to do is curve out and just do some decent stuff. So if you're in that deck, this is fine. If you're not in that deck, I'd say this is just a very average 2 drop. So it's not very exciting. Definitely not first pickable. Uh, Greenwood Sentinel is a 2-2 two -two for 1 and a green. It has Vigilance, so it doesn't tap if you're attacking with it. Uh, very similar to Child of Night, I found that this is just a fairly average 2-drop. This works pretty well with the Enchantments theme, because you can pile on enchantments onto the Greenwood Sentinel, uh, and then basically you have a very powerful not only attacking creature, but as well a blocking creature, uh, because it doesn't tap when it attacks, so you're able to keep that up and really, really stave off a lot of attacks from the opponents. So this is a really good card with a lot of the enchantments. In general, though, it is just kind of a slightly above average 2-drop, I would say. It's perfectly playable, definitely, definitely good for that, but not amazing. It's not first pickable. Uh, Walking Corpse is a 2-2 vanilla creature for one and a black. Obviously, this is just very, very plain. It's a bear. Uh, it's a black bear, and that's fine. Uh, it's playable as a filler card. It is a core set. It's not like we're looking to do crazy stuff, but it's not very exciting either. Not much to say about this one. It is just a 2-2 two, two for 2. Play it if you need to if you're in black, but other than that, really not that exciting. It does have a little bit of synergy, I will say. Uh, zombies do have sort of a sub-theme in this set, uh, for sure, just with Liliana and things like that going on. So. If you're in like a zombie theme deck, this is definitely more playable than it normally would be. But other than that, it's just a decent two drop. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Angel of the Dawn is a 3-3 three, three for four and a white. It does have flying and then when it enters the battlefield, creatures you control get plus one, plus one and gain vigilance until the end of the turn. I found that this card actually runs late in drafts uh, because while it is very, very good in a certain deck, which is the go wide, uh, usually white red deck, 
Um, it's not that great elsewhere. It's okay. I mean, it's still a 3-3 flyer for five. A little bit high costed, but it does have that upside of giving all of your creatures plus one, plus one in Vigilance. Even if you only have one or two other creatures, that's probably enough to make it worth it. But ideally, what you want to be doing is flooding the board with just tons and tons of little tokens, things like that. Buff them all up at once, give them Vigilance, and then be able to swing in all at once for just tons and tons of damage. That's the dream with this card. That's absolutely possible in that red-white strategy. That's where it's at its best, but honestly, it's perfectly playable either way. It's probably the best card that we've gotten so far. Uh, I wouldn't normally first pick this, uh, but so far that's... Uh, okay. Better card, Viashino Pyromancer. In my opinion, I like this card better. It's a 2-1 for 1 and a red. When it enters the battlefield, it deals 2 damage to target player or planeswalker. So this is a much more open card. It's red, it's aggressive, but it doesn't pigeonhole you into any strategy. This can very easily go into a red-white go-wide deck because it's just a solid two-drop. It doesn't necessarily produce uh, another creature or do anything like that, but it deals a lot of damage just on casting it, which is great. And it also threatens Planeswalkers, which you're not necessarily counting on seeing, but in certain corner cases, it's nice to have that. So I like that card for that reason. It's also great in just a mono red deck or just an aggressive deck. It doesn't have to be go wide. It doesn't have to be anything other than red. So this leaves you open. It's aggressive. It's dealing damage right off the bat. It just does everything that you want. Uh, and so, so far, this is, in my opinion, the best pick. It's just a very, very aggressive card. Salvager of Secrets is a 2-2 for 3 and 2 blue, which is a lot of mana. Uh, and when it enters the battlefield, you return target instant or sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. I found this to be very underwhelming. It does okay in the blue-red kind of spells matters deck that we already talked about, but uh, even there, it's pretty expensive. Uh, you do get a second use out of an instant or sorcery, which is great. And that's obviously you want to have some really high value instants and sorceries. But it's more important to have those first and and maybe pick up one of these rather than not really uh, than first picking this and then not having the instance and sorceries. So this card, very unexciting in my opinion, definitely something that if I'm late in the draft and I happen to be in that deck, I'll pick it up. Uh, Root Snare is an instant for one and a green. <clears throat> Excuse me. Prevent all combat damage that would be dealt this turn. This is your very classic fog effect. Very unexciting in draft. Uh, generally speaking, fog effects do not do anything for the game in limited. Maybe there are quarter cases out there, but uh, basically all you're doing is stalling. Uh, and unfortunately, that just doesn't get you anywhere unless you have a payoff. And in limited, generally speaking, you don't get the opportunity to have the payoff that you would in constructed. So this is a very unexciting card. Definitely not playable in my opinion. Uh, so I would just avoid this at all costs. <coughs> Uh, Abnormal Endurance is an instant for one and a black until the end of the turn. Target creature gets plus two plus zero and gains when this creature dies. Return it to the battlefield tapped under its owner's control. This is a very good combat trick. Uh, I like this card quite a lot. Uh, not only does it most likely mean one of your creatures is going to trade off with something on the opponent's side of the field, but it also brings your creature back, which in, tand in tandem with something like a Pyromancer or something else with a uh, Enter the Battlefield ability, means you get dual triggers off of these abilities. You get to hit it twice for two damage with the Pyromancer, or uh, in some cases you get to pull back an instant or sorcery with the Salvager of Secrets. So there's a lot of opportunity for this to be very good. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, but I would also not necessarily take this early in the draft. It is still a combat trick. You're gonna be able to pick these up at any time. Uh, and you may not find yourself in these colors. It's not a reason to be in the color. So uh, it's something that you can pick up later in the draft and very good if you do. Don't run too many of them, but it is good. Uh, our first uncommon is Gastbark Twins. It is a 7-7 seven, seven for 5 and 2 green. It has Trample uh, and it can block an additional creature during combat. So on the face of this already, it's a 7-7 seven, seven for 7. Pretty good stats also has trample which means it's going to be able to get through ground creatures very very easily or anything that blocks it uh, to at least deal some damage to the opponent not only that it can also block an additional creature so it's great on defense as well very interesting because that trample makes you kind of want to be an aggressive deck uh, or make this an aggressive card while the uh, second ability kind of makes you want to play the defense role but what's good about that is it's flexible it's great in both scenarios so whether you're winning or losing the game 
this can really, really help you in both of those cases. Uh, obviously it is a seven drop, so it is a bomb. It's going to be late game. It's not something you're looking to play early like the Pyromancer, uh, but it is very, very powerful. I could honestly see an argument for this over the Pyromancer or vice versa. I think it kind of depends on what you're interested in doing. I'm going to keep them both to the side and we'll decide uh, later on. Uh, Gravedigger uh, is a 2-2 for three and a black. When it enters the battlefield, you may return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. This is another really classic card and a very good one at that. Being able to pull back a threat that they've already had to deal with just means you're getting two for one on value at least right off the bat on that regard. So a lot of really good value off of this card. I think I'd rather just have the Gaspark Twins or the Pyromancer just because they're kind of good on their own. Uh, this is really bad if you just don't have anything in your graveyard worth bringing back. Uh, generally speaking, you will most likely, but that's not always the case. So I would pass this in, in favor of something that we've already got. Uh, Exclusion Mage is a 2-2 for 2 and a blue. When it enters the battlefield, return target creature and opponent controls to its owner's hand. This is a very, very good tempo play. It's good because it's only 3 mana on top of that, which means it's going to be playable most at most times of the game. Uh, obviously, <coughs> in the first couple turns, it won't be. Uh, but by turn 3, ideally, you could play this. And then thereafter, in any point of the game, it's probably still going to be very, very good. So... I really like this. I think over the other two picks that we have, it's more my play style as well. I tend to lean towards tempo plays. Uh, and so for me, this is going to be the pick so far. We'll see what our rare is. It is Mystic Archaeologist. It is a 2 1 for 1 and a blue. You can pay 5, 3, and 2 blue to draw two cards. This is a very powerful ability in the sense that you can draw a lot of cards off of this if it sticks around. I tend to find that it doesn't stick around very often. Uh, it is just a 2-1 for 2. You can play it early, but you can't use the ability early. Uh, and so for that reason, not super exciting in my opinion. Uh, and we did not get a foil. So for me, I think the pick is Exclusion Mage. I just feel like that's the best card. It's better at most points of the game uh, than some of the other cards. And so for me, that's just the clear pick. Gaspark Twins, as well as the Pyromancer, is still very good. I think it's probably better to say it's between the, the Twins and the Mage. I would still go for the mage. So let me know in the comment section below if you disagree. But if you enjoyed this video, I hope you will leave a like or a comment down below. And please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Crack-A-Pack episode.